Some people and situations should come with a trigger warning, as in a trigger warning to your mental health. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. As women, taking care of our mental health is of utmost importance. Today is Mental Health Day. And if you need a reminder to take care of your mental health, here it is. Make sure that you are being mindful of the people and the situations that you are entertaining. Some people should truly come with a trigger warning. And what I mean by that is that when you get around them, your nervous system is suddenly all out of whack. You suddenly feel like you have to walk on eggshells, you feel very angry, you feel anxious, you feel stressed. Unfortunately, many of the people who, make, who may make us feel that way are oftentimes the people closest to us, like our friends and family. And while we absolutely love our friends and family, if they are triggering your anxiety, if they are triggering de depression and anxiousness within you, you may have to limit how much time you're spending with those people. You see, sacrificing your mental health to keep everything peaceful is not wise. Women, wise women, do not do that. And while we might love those people, if they are impacting your mental health, if you're not in a headspace where you feel like you can deal with them on a consistent basis, you might have to put distance between yourself and them. Instead of seeing them in person, you might have to call them more often or text them or see them once a month, once a week. Tolerating toxic behavior, triggering behaviors from other people, there's nothing virtuous about that. There is nothing um, humble about allowing people to destroy your mental health. Also, the situations you entertain, i.e. your workplace, your job, your places of worship, your places where you shop. See, ladies, we have a choice in how we want to live. And while you can't always make changes, make moves right away, because I understand for some people financially, it's not possible to just make a change right away. But you can make little moves every day that will go towards impacting your future and bettering your mental health your financial situation, and whatever else it might be in your life. You always have a choice. You're never stuck. But with your workplace, if your workplace is toxic, if you sit in the parking lot and cry before you go to work, if you cry after work, if you're constantly lashing out at family and friends all because of your workplace, it might be time for you to look for another job or consider working for yourself. The impact that toxic work environments have on women's mental health is higher than it's ever been before. And it's not just that the work environment might be toxic, it might just be too much for you. I know I have been in many workplaces where it wasn't necessarily toxic, it's just too much for me. It was too much for me. The people might have been very kind, um, the people who I see in person, they might be okay, but it could be the volume of people. It could be the pressure to perform. See, as women, and I'll say this until I'm blue in the face, we are not built like men. We are not um, built to withstand so much physical, especially physical pressure at length. We are not able to withstand a lot of mental and overstimulation for a very long time. And I can speak for myself and I believe many other women if they will be honest with themselves, their jobs are highly stimulating. They are overstimulated. I know for me, I'm really starting to realize that I believe that the role I'm taking on where I currently am, while the work environment, as far as how it physically is, beautiful. A lot of the people, wonderful. The nature of the job, it's a lot. People constantly throwing questions at you left and right. A lot of people talking to you all at once. Over time, your job, and the point I'm making, is that your job can impact your mental health. So the work environment might not be toxic, but it might be just too much for the woman you're becoming. It might be too much for who you are at this season in your life. When I was in my 20s, I could take on so much. When I was in my late teens, uh, like up until mid-20s, late 20s, I could take on a lot. I could be the big boss of this. I could do that. I can do this task. I can do this. Once I got into my 30s, it's not that my stamina lowered. Absolutely not. It's that my mental bandwidth lowered. I feel like I cannot deal with 
a whole lot of questions, a whole lot of issues, especially not from things that I really don't want to do. Now, this right here, um, orating and motivating and encouraging and inspiring and teaching, this is my gift. I can do this all day long. I can inspire and coach and teach women and help women all day long. But the robotic nature of some of our jobs where we just have to perform and put on and smile on command and do all these different things, um, or we have to do heavy, heavy, <laughs> laborious type of jobs, over time, that will impact your mental health and it will also impact your physical health. You begin to feel that in your body. The physical, the mental soon turns into the physical. So not only do people trigger mental health issues within you, your situations and the things that you choose to tolerate at your job can be triggering your mental health. And then let's talk about our living environments. Many women live in living environments. They live in cities. They live in towns, neighborhoods, apartment complexes where they are dealing with stress constantly. They are living in homes with angry people, jealous people, haters, people who are also going through different issues and they put their issues on you. I had a family member. I'm going to give you a quick story. A lot of people say, you know what, why are you trying to get them out of here? You know, that's their home. I believe that your environment carries spirits. Wherever you're living, whatever you're dealing with at the time, if there have been a lot of negativity and drama and issues in the home and you're trying to change your life, I believe that you cannot change in the same toxic environment that messed you up. Some people want to change, but they're still around the same type of people, same environment that they were in when they were in their situation. That's why a lot of times when people go to like rehabs and they want to do some kind of rehabilitation for some kind of substance abuse or something, they're often inv advised to not go back into that same situation where they came from, which means if you are around people doing those things, you can't go back to that. You're rehabilitated. You're trying to do better for yourself. You can't go back. But some people's mental health suffers because they decide to stay in situations and they think they are so mentally strong that they can go back into toxic environments and some way change it. And while many people might have that mental and spiritual stamina, even if you are grounded spiritually, you have to use wisdom enough to know when you just can't deal with this situation. I've been there, done that. I can't go back to that. Mentally, I'm not prepared and I don't want to test my mental. It's not even about being strong enough mentally. It's the fact that I must say, just to use a little bit churchy words, <laughs> if God delivered you from certain situations, why would you want to stay in that? For your mental and your spiritual well-being, you will never grow and get better if you choose to stay in environments that are no good for your mental health, that trigger you. So when it comes to your mental health, where you live absolutely matters and who you live with. I have experienced living in environments where it was always toxic, arguing, fussing, fighting, always some kind of bickering, always some kind of issue. That is no way to live. And I believe that was part of the reason why I dealt with anxiety, why I kind of had that, you know, anxiousness for a long time. And I'm not saying that I don't have moments of anxiousness. Who doesn't? But living a lifestyle of being worried and anxious and fearful and always waiting for the next shoe to drop, that impact that toxic environments have on your mental health, it is no joke. So as women, we have to be mindful of our mental health and how the things we tolerate, our situations, the people we tolerate, and our environments. Those are three key areas where we must protect our mental health. If we allow people to dump all over us and treat us however they want to and accepting abnormal as normal, your mental health will suffer. If you go into situations, i.e. work environments, you know, living situations, relationships that will test your mental health, that is no good for you. And lastly, your actual physical lo location of where you're living. If you are living in an environment where people are toxic, look, I understand many people, many of us live in the city, many people live in the hood, worse hoods than the other. I live in the city. And I can tell you, if I don't strategize on how I move throughout my life sometimes or through the neighborhoods and through the area, you very well can let what you have going on in your community 
impact your mental health. And that's why I don't watch the news too much. I like to be aware, but I don't like to meditate on the bad things I hear on the news. And I'm also, you know, me and my family, you know, we're trying to make a plan to at least get outside of the city. We can get quick enough to the city, but get outside. I like the city for the fact that it's convenient, but everyone knows that most major cities have a lot of crime and that can definitely have an impact on your mental health, thinking about those things constantly. And that's why this little tidbit before I end, if you live in an environment, one of the major cities where there's a lot going on, a lot of crime, a lot of craziness, make every occasion to get outside of the city. I love going into the outskirts of my city, the suburbs, suburbs of my city, the shopping centers and all of that. When I do my shopping, I'll go outside of the city because your mental health is not just a matter of like deep, deep things. It can be little things that trigger you. I mean, I heard a news story earlier today and it made me cry. Because people just minding their business, trying to get on the bus to go where they need to go, suddenly they're innocent victims of senseless behavior. You know, hearing that really bothered me. It triggered me. I think it would for any human being who has an ounce of empathy in their heart. But that reminded me of why I have to be mindful of not listening to the news so much, staying prayed up most importantly, and also just being mindful of how I move too, you know? So once again, as women, be mindful of your mental health. Today is mental health day. It's nothing to joke about, nothing to play with. And do things that keep your mind and your spirit at ease. All right. Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.